All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's Waterloo Wednesday webinar. Today is May 18th, and we are going to be tackling quite a big topic this week, which is why you should be accepting your offer to the University of Waterloo. We know that some of you may still be waiting to hear back from us, and some of you might not have applied just yet. Um, and wherever you are in your uh, exploration of Waterloo. We hope that this webinar is helpful and gets you excited about all the things that we have to offer. Uh, and for those of you just tuning in and thinking about, um, you know, I'd love to accept my offer if you just send me one. Well, we expect to wrap up our offers um, by the end of this month, so stay tuned and make sure you keep checking your quest periodically. Uh, if you would like to turn on captions during this webinar, they can be turned on through your individual devices by clicking on the three dots in your menu or the closed caption box at the bottom of the screen, that CC box. Once you select that, the captions will appear on your screen. Our Q&A is also now open, so if you have any questions throughout the webinar, please feel free to submit those and our team of recruitment staff, uh, admissions officers, and other students are here to help answer those questions as we go. We'll also have time to address some of those frequently asked questions during our Q&A time at the end of the webinar today. And of course, if you think of any questions after the webinar, please don't hesitate to email them to us at liaison at uwaterloo.ca. We're also recording today's webinar and it will be available on YouTube um, and Experience Waterloo next week. Uh, so just to introduce myself, uh, my name is Bailey. I'm one of the hosts for today. Um, my pronouns are she, her. I actually just finished up my Bachelor of Public Health degree and I am coming back in the fall to do my Master's of Public Health Sciences um, and I'm also a student ambassador on campus. With that, I'll pass it over to Tyler to introduce himself. Sweet. Thanks, Bailey. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, lovely to see all of you joining us today. My name is Tyler. I go by he and pronouns, and I'm just wrapping up my third year of science and aviation here at Waterloo. I'm going to be co-hosting today's Waterloo webinar with Bailey, and I'm also on the student ambassador team. Um, I'm also involved with Aviation Society Residence Dawn um, this term, um, so those are a few areas um, I'm involved with this term, but super looking forward uh, to tell everyone about Waterloo and what makes it special. Um, so before uh, we move on, we do want to acknowledge um, the land that we are situated on. So the University of Waterloo acknowledges that much of our work takes place on the traditional territory of the neutral Anishinaabe and the Haudenosaunee peoples. And our main campus is situated on the Haldeman Tract, which is the land granted in a legally binding treaty to the Six Nations. Um, and that includes six miles on each side of the Grand River. And although we are gathered remotely today, I hope that you will also take the time to respect and acknowledge the traditional territory that you are currently located on as well. Um, so across campus, we are engaged in active work uh, towards reconciliation through our research, teaching, learning, and community building at Waterloo. And much of it is centered through our Office of Indigenous Relations. Awesome. So. Um, in just a moment, we'll share with you some ways you can stay connected with us at Waterloo and how to visit. Um, we'll share our story of the week, um, which is a little bit special this week. And, and then we'll bring uh, you our All About Waterloo, um, our uh, Why You Should Accept Your Offer to Waterloo presentation. And whether you're looking into universities just starting off or if you're um, here to learn something new about university, I hope today you find something in, that really helps you make your decision on where you want to go. Um, following that, we will have our weekly quiz and that's your chance to win a Waterloo Warriors hoodie by answering our quiz questions correctly and the fastest so please stay tuned to that so make sure you pay attention um, so that you're eligible for one of our hoodies and we'll end the webinar today with a Q&A answering some of your questions. So uh, we do want you to stay connected with us. So uh, virtual campus tours are continuing for those who would like to tour uh, Waterloo from the comfort of your own home uh, while still connecting with student ambassadors and getting all your questions answered that way. Um, however, if you're able to make the trip to Waterloo, we welcome you back to campus for in-person tours. We have a very busy summer of in-person tours, um, so you will need to sign up um, in advance, but checking out campus is honestly the best way to get a sense of what life is like at Waterloo. So um, you can find information for both virtual um, and in-person tours from the Tours and Events webpage um, on the screen here and in the chat. 
Um, and if you haven't got one, make sure you get a Waterloo View book or even a faculty or program brochure to help make you um, an informed decision. So you can download those instantly online, or if you leave us your address, we'll send you one of our uh, brochures right to your door for free. So you can find the brochure requests form on our website on the screen as well and in the Q&A um, the portion over there. So of course, there's tons of helpful information that we couldn't get all into the brochure. So that's where the missing manual comes in. So everything you want us to know that you won't find in our brochures um, is found on this great website. Um, things like how to choose a program, how to meet people, how to decide on a residence, all these tips curated by our very own students. It's all there, um, so go check that out. Um, of course, like Bailey said, if you think of any questions later on, feel free to contact us at liaison at uwaterloo.ca. So um, now I would like to introduce a very special guest here we have today. You might have seen her around if you've tuned in in the past few weeks. Um, I'll pass it over to Maggie. Sorry, trying to find a new button. Um, hi everyone, so my name is Maggie. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, and I'm an undergraduate uh, recruitment specialist for the university. Um, I'm also an honor science graduate uh, just very recently, and it's great to be able to be here today as a guest. Awesome. Thanks so much for joining us, Maggie. Um, at this point, we would normally share our story of the week, but we thought we'd do something a little different uh, and do a bit of a throwback today instead. So we're going to share actually our own stories of why we chose the University of Waterloo. So I'll go first uh, with this lovely picture of me and my friends with um, Dottie the Clown. So I actually chose Waterloo because of a tour I took on campus. Um, it was in person. I know we do virtual tours as well, but it, it was in person. Um, and as soon as I stepped foot on campus, I could really see myself living, studying, and working there for the next four to five years, and now apparently some more. Um, it just felt very much like home to me. Um, throughout the tour, I got to talk to some health faculty, and they were all super engaged and really friendly and excited to have us on campus. And I just felt like that was right for me. I, my program had a really small cohort and there was a lot of ways to get involved in health. Um, an example being in that picture, that was our health fun run that they do every year. I was volunteering with that. Um, there was just a ton of really fun opportunities and it's a really warm, tight knit faculty. And that was really um, appealing to me. And that's why I ultimately chose Waterloo. So Tyler, I'll pass it to you now if you want to share your story. Awesome, that's amazing, Bailey. Um, for me, um, I have a bit of a different reason, um, although similar. Um, for me, I always loved aviation and airplanes ever since I was a little kid. That was like the one thing that got me excited. So um, traditionally, if you wanted to become a commercial pilot, you would have to go through a private flight school or um, a college, um, but I also really wanted to get a university degree. So as I was growing up, that was my dilemma. Do I want to go to aviation or do I want to go to university? But when I found out that the University of Waterloo had a program that not, all, not only offered like the flight training and the licenses necessary for to become a successful um, pilot in the future, but also graduating with a Bachelor of Science, I knew that this was the exact perfect program for me. So um, three years later, almost four years now, I have absolutely zero reg regrets. Um, I absolutely love what I do. Um, I get to fly planes. I get to um, do what I love and be with, uh, have opportunities in aviation, which is amazing. And the people that are around me are some of the most enthusiastic and passionate people I've ever met. So um, honestly, I have had a blast these past three years being in a career um, that I dreamed of. So um, definitely, I um, absolutely feel like I made the best decision coming to Waterloo. So this is a photo of uh, me right after I passed my private pilot license in my first year. So that was my very first license I was able to get, uh, which is really cool. Um, and since then, I've been working. I passed my commercial flight test and I'm now working towards my multi engine rating. So um, quite a few exciting updates, but now I'll pass it off to Maggie about why you chose Waterloo. Sorry, so hard to find the mute button for some reason. Um, yeah, so some of the reasons why I chose Waterloo was mainly because of the people here, as you can see in this photo. Um, it's a lot of my first year friends and my Don, 
And so when I was in high school, um, I came to visit Waterloo during open houses and the interactions I had with some of the students and staff really made me feel like I was welcomed here. Um, I never really talked to others who were uh, really enthusiastic about science like I was back in high school. And it was an amazing feeling to finally feel like I belonged somewhere when I did come to visit. Um, so yeah, I felt like I'd finally found people who had very similar mindsets and thought processes as me. And that excitement and enthusiasm about our similar passions is what pushed me to choose Waterloo. So yeah, that was kind of the reason why I chose Waterloo. Awesome, thanks Maggie. Definitely, I think all of us can relate to the people being a core foundation um, of our Waterloo experience and our memories. So definitely, um, I think everyone can reverberate to that feeling. So um, to move on to our main portion, um, this is a very exciting um, webinar because a lot of us are have, uh, having to make a big decision now. Um, this year, actually, the University of Waterloo received a little bit more than 67,000 applications, which is insane. Um, to clarify, these um, students could have applied to more than one program in um, sorry, more than one application to Waterloo. So it's not the number of individuals who applied, but the total of application, but still um, it's a very impressive number. Um, so um, if you have or are about to receive an offer to Waterloo, then we send a very big congratulations to you and hope you're proud of your accomplishments for getting you all this far. Um, it's a huge achievement to, um, to get into our university and we expect about 7,000 students that will begin uh, studies with us this fall. So um, it would be joining us it's huge diverse student population and with a reputation that's known all over the all over the world. Yeah, absolutely. And like Tyler said, some of you have already accepted your offer. You might have done so as soon as you received it and others might be waiting right until that final deadline of June 1st. Um, and again, others uh, we aren't done yet. Um, the rest of our offers are expected to be made by the end of May, so there's still a little time um, for those offers to go out, but everyone has their own reasons to be here and there are some common factors that uh, might impact why you accept your offer to Waterloo. For many of you, you might have found the perfect program and in some cases a one of a kind program uh, only offered at Waterloo with dedicated professors and researchers. You may have taken a look at some of the courses available to you, the ability to customize your degree and add things on like minors, options or specializations to really dive into what you're most passionate about. And some of you will even discover new areas of interest when you get to university. I know that's something that happened for me. Uh, the experience you gain outside of the classroom can be just as impactful Maybe you've chosen Waterloo because of our strong co-op program and the connection to more than 7,000 employers all over the world, giving you the opportunity to test drive different jobs and gain practical experience while also getting paid. And even if you're not going into co-op, you've probably learned about the many professional development and experiential learning opportunities that are most uh, that are a part of most, if not all, Waterloo programs, giving you that important hands-on learning experience. It could also be that supportive sense of community that Waterloo offers, whether it's in a residence or a university college community where you'll meet your peers who will go through this journey with you term after term, participating in more than 250 student run clubs or in recreation and athletic programs. Um, give you lots of options, so even if you're working hard, you can take a break and meet new people, learn more about yourself and also have some fun along the way. Maybe it's the city that you're really interested in and it's student centered atmosphere with businesses and services that cater to the more than 50,000 students who live within the region. The accessible public transit makes exploring the vibrant region easy to do with your student card, finding your favorite place to grab a coffee or a snack and do some studying or maybe even networking with some of Canada's top innovation minds found in the startup community. Uh, and probably it's a combination of all of those things that I just mentioned, plus Waterloo's reputation overall. Uh, that's going to give you the confidence and know-how that will be setting you up to take on whatever comes your way after graduation, whether that's securing jobs, starting an organization, developing a product, and making the world a better place. So after all of that, Tyler, is there anything that you have to add? 
Uh, well, Bailey, you had a very nice extensive list. Um, I would say um, for me, it's the combination of all those factors that I was looking for in a university. Um, so that is the reputation um, that it has uh, around and the opportunities you get as a student to really use those skills um, along with the city, the students and all the faculty that really help you make um, have a successful time here. So definitely all of these things combined together. It, personally for me, make Waterloo the ideal university I was looking for. Um, now we're actually going to introduce our Warrior Top 10, uh, Top 10 Reasons Why You Should Become a Waterloo Warrior and Come to the University of Waterloo. So um, Bailey, Megan, I have curated our very own personalized list of what makes you Waterloo so special to uh, us. Um, and we compiled it together into uh, a top 10 list to illustrate to you why we stand out as a university. So um, we'll start with three at a time and hopefully by the end of our top 10 you can see why we all collectively decided to choose Waterloo. Uh, but first up we'll start with Bailey's top three reasons. Yeah this list was super fun to make. It was really fun to kind of think back to why I think I was applying or looking at Waterloo as university and I'm sure it was for you as well. Um, the three that really stood out to me were first um, co-op that is an option for my program and that was a huge decider for me. Um, the opportunity to try out different careers in a much more low stakes environment, you know, only having to do it for four months while also getting paid was a huge draw for me. Um, my second point was the hands-on learning opportunities. Something I loved that was within my degree, whether I did co-op or not, there was a lot of opportunities within my program to have experiential learning. Um, so I can always think of my seminar I took in second year on Alzheimer's where I got to go to a uh, senior's care home and I got to learn uh, and talk to people with Alzheimer's and learn about their experiences. And that really solidified my learning in a much deeper way. So I always think of that um, and it, it's definitely been a great part of my education. Uh, and my third one is the supportive faculty. Um, professors in the health faculty, and I know across the board, are all super helpful, willing to talk. They really want you to be successful, and I have certainly felt that along the way. Um, and I think that is something that makes Waterloo a really great place to learn because you have a lot of support available uh, to help you along the way. So those are my three. Awesome. Thanks, Bailey. Those are some great questions. Um, there are some sirens going out my window, so please pretend that's not happening. Um, so keep those top three um, reasons in mind because we are going to add to the list. But let's dive a little bit deeper into some more reasons why you might choose the University of Waterloo. But first of all, let's start with our academics and programs. So the programs that you've applied to and already have an offer to, hopefully. Um, so many students choose the university because it offers the program they're looking for. Um, and it's always finding that program that allows you to make an impact on those around you and for the career that you are desiring. Um, so in our Faculty of Arts, we have 29 majors to choose from with hundreds of different courses um, and our engineering is very well known with over 8,000 students enrolled in 15 undergraduate programs and it's one of the largest and the top engineering schools in uh, Canada. Um, the direct entry into a specific engineering field means that you start studying from day one and the cohort um, based structure um, so you have a very um, small and strong supportive environment to build relationships in. Um, environment stands out as Canada's largest faculty of environment um, and it's all about creating a more sustainable world um, and as we know the world definitely needs more of our environment grads so we are here to make uh, a big impact in the world. In our faculty and health, it's all about preventing illness and injury and promoting health and well-being um, and optimizing the quality of life for individuals and communities. So um, if you're here to help other humans, um, that is the perfect faculty for you. Um, mathematics is the largest concentration of math and computer science talent in the world, actually, with over 45 programs and more than 500 courses to choose from. Um, we are the only dedicated faculty of mathematics in North America, which really helps us uh, stand out on that map. Uh, finally, we have our faculty of science with over seven with uh, 17 programs and opportunities right from first year to start with labs and getting involved with research. We have over uh, we have uh, 50 million dollars in annual research funding. Um, and we are the number one comprehensive research university in Canada. So lots of um, very um, cool stuff happening here. 
So among those are several one-of-a-kind programs found only at Waterloo. And we have a very unique way of approaching business at Waterloo as well, where you can combine your interests in other ways and or make it your main focus here at Waterloo. In general, so many of our programs offer customization, even the most structured programs, um, whether that's a minor, an option, a specialization, or a certificate. Um, and we also have really, really outstanding business and entrepreneurship support. And that takes place through our IP policy um, or um, intellectual property policy where your ideas that you create, any startup, any project you make, those ideas belong to you, the student, um, and not the university's property and can be used to create a lucrative business for yourself in the future. Um, so those are just some ways that Waterloo really stands up to help make students successful in the future. Awesome. Thanks, Tyler. That was a great summary of all the, the faculties and the cool things they have to offer. Um, another really cool aspect of Waterloo are the university colleges. Uh, those are a way to be a smart, uh, a part of a smaller community at Waterloo with some smaller class sizes, academic advisors who challenge and support you and have an emphasis on community building, service learning and leadership. Plus, all have tight knit residents communities as well. And finally, there's chocolate milk on tap in the cafeterias, which of course is always a bonus. Oh yeah, the chocolate milk is definitely one of the big sellers. Um, but moving on from university colleges, um, we're gonna emphasize our co-op program here at Waterloo. Um, and more than 31% of Canada's university co-op education work terms are completed by students from Waterloo. Um, so 96 universities in this country, but just one school accounts for one third of all of the participants in co-op. So um, Waterloo truly is the co-op school in Canada. Um, our school students go through real world competitive processes to secure a co-op position with some even outside of Canada. And the money earned during paid co-op uh, term covers the cost of education um, and help you gain a competitive advantage in the job market after graduating compared um, to other students because um, you'll gain up to two year, uh, full years of uh, work experience combined already. So um, that puts you miles ahead of other candidates who may not have any work experience at all. Um, we also back, have access to North America's largest co-op job pool and lots of resources from the Center for Career Action, um, such as resume critiquing, mock interviews, and so much more. Um, so we are the largest co-op program of its kind in the entire world. So we are definitely um, on the map for employers globally with over 7,000 connections. So um, that is how our co-op program and co-op students stand out. But now we're gonna pass it over to Maggie, who's gonna talk a bit more about the community elements um, at Waterloo. Yeah, thanks Tyler. Uh, so yeah, there's so much to do at the university and within the city of Waterloo that I will briefly just mention. Um, so we have over 250 different clubs uh, ranging from game development, the pre-med club uh, to a cheese club. Um, and at the University of Waterloo, we definitely care about educating and supporting diversity. And if you do too, there are some awesome initiatives and clubs such as the Ind Indigenous Student Association at St. Paul's. Uh, we have GLOW, we have RAISE and many more. Everyone has a place to express themselves at Waterloo and be supported here. So um, we also have 120 plus uh, campus wellness staff to support and guide you throughout your studies. So definitely check out those resources as well. Um, if you're in your first year, you're guaranteed a place at residence. Uh, residence was an extremely fun experience for me. I made a lot of new friends from um, all different programs and I felt safe and supported as, um, and it eventually became like a second family to me. Um, residence also has different drop-in study sessions, which helped me a lot during um, my midterms and exams. And some residences have gyms to conveniently work out in. So that was always a really big bonus. So within the city of Waterloo, um, there's about 5,000, uh, 5, 50,000, sorry, uh, students. So it really feels like a student town. Uh, you don't need a car to get around as a lot of the amenities are very close by to the university. Um, there are lots of great restaurants in the area, uh, such as all you can eat sushi, there's Korean barbecue, uh, vegan and vegetarian restaurants, and of course, there's a lot of bubble tea shops. Um, most grocery stores um, are just a short uh, bus ride away, and if you have a car, uh, Costco is also not too far, so you can always uh, definitely reach there. 
Uh, you also have a variety of options of entertainment. You can go play darts, uh, you can go bouldering, go for a hike, or visit the St. Jacob's Farmer's Market. Another cool aspect about uh, of the Waterloo area is that Waterloo is considered Canada's tech hub with more than um, 1,570 tech-related businesses in the Waterloo region. So that's a really cool aspect to also look into. Um, so again, there's tons to do around the city of Waterloo, like the list is endless. Um, and we only uh, just scratched the surface of that. So if you do end up choosing Waterloo, definitely go and explore around. Um, that's something I did in my first year. And there's definitely going to be something out there that will suit your interests. Um, so with that being said, uh, now we're going to talk about Waterloo's reputation. And I'll pass it off to Bailey. Awesome. Thanks, Maggie. And I think I should say first that reputation shouldn't be your main motivation, especially when it comes to rankings. But the University of Waterloo name does carry some weight and it is something to consider. It can open doors for future opportunities and jobs. And it's something I'm certainly proud to have listed on my resume, especially when it comes to reminding employers that we're number one in Canada for hands on experiential learning and number one for career preparedness in the country. That's a big reason why 96% of Waterloo grads are employed in positions related to their skills they acquired at Waterloo within six months of graduating, compared to the average Ontario graduates at about 79%. Across the country and even internationally, Waterloo is well known for our programs, our research, our outcomes, and what our students and grads accomplish. It's an exciting place to be a part of for sure. Some other reputable mentions are Waterloo is the in the top 25 in the world for graduate employability. Uh, that's as of 2020. Number one in Canada for graduate employability as of 2022. Number one in Canada for most innovative university, uh, that's McLean's 2022. Number one for comprehensive research uh, university in Canada, which is uh, as of 2022. Number one among comprehensive universities for experiential education as of McLean's uh, 2022. Number two in Canada for employer student connections uh, as of 2022 again. Number two in Canada for efforts that advance implementation of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals as of 2020. Number three, best overall university in Canada as of McLean's 2022 survey. And number one in Canada for producing venture capitalist backed entrepreneurs as of 2018 or 2019, I think is the re most recent stat we have. But with that being said, it's clear that the University of Waterloo has a great reputation for itself and we can also vouch for that given our own experiences. I know I can. I'm sure Maggie and Tyler can as well. Uh, so with that I will pass it uh, back to Tyler. Awesome. Thanks Bailey. Uh, next stop. Um, next up I thought we could take a trip down memory lane and address some of our frequently asked questions from some of our previous Waterloo Wednesday webinars that came quite often. So just a reminder that you can always watch some of our recorded past webinars on our YouTube channel um, Experience Waterloo uh, for more detailed information. Now the first up for those of you who have been following our webinars you may remember our all about Waterloo webinars a scholarships and financial aid one um, and campus wellness that we had earlier in the year. So a commonly frequently asked question um, that you're all probably wondering is when can I hear back about admissions? So most offers of admissions are made in May and once we have received midterm marks from high schools. Um, so if you're still waiting to hear back, don't worry, it'll be within the, um, the, the end of the month. So Please check your request every now and then for updates, which um, will um, publish the results. Um, during a webinar about student scholarships and financial aid, we had Maureen and Brenda from SAM, um, SAFA, which um, covers lots of important information on topics from how to pay for university uh, to expensive associated with university to student awards and financial aid options. So another frequently asked question for financial support is when should students be applying for OSAP? Um, for those of you who do not know what OSEP is, it's the Ontario Student Assistance Program that provides loans and grants to help students in post-secondary um, for costs for all Canadian citizens and uh, permanent residents living in Ontario. Um, so this application form for OSEP should already be available and the recommendation 
deadline to apply is June 15th. So mark your calendars and submit those applications on time if able. Um, but a big component every student should focus on and think about as they transition into university is wellness. So a common question is, what are some of those resources that students can access at university? So um, some include our Indigenous Students Association. We have our GLOW Center, um, RAISE, which is a program for advocacy. Uh, we have health services um, and counseling services that offer professional um, physical and wellness of support through therapy and appointments. We have MATES, which is our mentorship program from upper years to support any low level um, mental health concerns or if you need an upper year to talk to. Um, we have accessibility services, peer mentorship transition programs, drop-in tutoring and residence. Our residence dons are just an, another example of lots of point and contents that you can access to have people to talk to um, and to support you in your mental health journey along with your academic journey in Waterloo. Awesome. Thanks for all that information, Tyler. Um, I'm going to shift gears a little bit and remind you about what we talked about in March. Uh, first, we had Graham, a career advisor from the Center for Career Action. Uh, he talked not only about why co-op is great, but also how it works. This was uh, a really common uh, question among future Waterloo students. So co-op at Waterloo runs a little bit differently than uh, the system you may be familiar with in high school. Students start co-op during their first or second year and you'll alternate be between four month study terms and four month work terms. Getting a co-op job is competitive where you apply and interview for opportunities, uh, but no worries. Luckily, you'll have exclusive access to North America's largest co-op job pool and lots of resources to help you along the way. Um, I am a co-op student and I can certainly vouch for that. Um, during our student experience webinar, we got to talk to three current students studying at the University of Waterloo to gain an insight on what their experience has been like here at Waterloo. A frequent question is how are some how are some ways students can get involved on campus and there are many ways that you can get involved on campus you could join a club or a society play for a sports team become a student ambassador volunteer as an orientation leader and many many more waterloo has over 200 different clubs to choose from and there are countless volunteer and part-time opportunities available so don't be shy and definitely get out there and try something new Speaking of experience, a big change as part of university lifestyle is possibly moving away from home and living on your own. Uh, so we also had uh, webinars that focused on building community within residence at Waterloo. Uh, so during our campus housing and uh, residence webinar, we had Christine and Katie from campus housing tell us about um, what each of the residents offered and the different meal plan options and why you should live on campus in residence. Um, in addition, we also had our student panel on the residence experience where we heard from three current students that lived in either um, the campus housing residence or in the university colleges at Waterloo. A very popular question we received in both webinars was what are some ways to meet new people and some of the supports available in residence? So in terms of meeting new people, um, you um, get to know your roommates or floor mates through different social activities that are um, created through the dons. Um, so that is through the Don special events um, and the Don's role is basically an upper year student um, that creates events um, is there for uh, any safety or security reasons as well as if you want an upper year to talk to that Don is available for you and their events are an amazing way for you to meet new people on your floor um, and you can also make group chats and or meet up to studies through um, any of the group chats or you can join a living learning community in residence where you'll live with other students of the same program as you. We also have different sp uh, supports for you, um, including Dons, our front desk assistants, our on-duty, on-call staff, um, residence counselors, and our residence life coordinators are all people within residence that are points of contacts for you to choose. Um, now I'm going to pass it back to Bailey for our next Waterloo Top 10 um, list. Great. Awesome. So just a reminder, uh, Tyler, Maggie and I have been uh, planning our own top 10 list of why we think you should accept your offer to Waterloo. So I already presented my three and I'm going to pass it to Maggie to give her three reasons um, on that top 10 list. Yeah, thanks Bailey. So yeah, um, my top three, I guess, <laughs> and the compiled of our top 10. So first off, um, I wanted to talk about student clubs. Um, so there's so many cool and different clubs here at Waterloo, as I probably mentioned earlier, and um, 
either Bailey or Tyler also mentioned, we have over 200 clubs and societies to choose from at Waterloo. Um, personally, I was an exec uh, of the Biology Undergraduate Society for two years, uh, where I've had roles such as the VP Social and VP Academic and Co-President um, within BUGS, it's short form for BUGS. Um, through this club, I was able to make so many new connections and collaborate and work with staff and faculty members as well, So, which was always a really cool thing. Uh, this is where I met most of my really good friends uh, still to this day, and it helped me gain a lot of different leadership skills and collaborative work experience with um, others. So definitely um, one of my top uh, reasons. Um, my second reason is there's such a friendly atmosphere at Waterloo. Um, so I found that Waterloo students are very outgoing and love to help others, uh, whether it's through academics or uh, through everyday life. Um, the people are always willing to lend a helping hand. And as for someone who always struggled to ask for help, um, it was almost like a breath of fresh air for me when a lot of my friends would offer to help me in times of need. So that was something that like really resonated within me. And it's kind of the idea that we're all in the same boat and we just kind of want everyone to be good, healthy, and happy. So yeah, and then my third and final reason is, uh, so the campus, uh, the physical layout of the campus. So the first time when I came to Waterloo to tour the university back in high school, um, I really enjoyed that the campus is pretty much uh, an enclosed space of its um, own. Um, for example, like other universities tend to have campuses like kind of spread, uh, spread throughout a city and it can get quite confusing to know which buildings are part of the university and which are not. But at Waterloo, every building is found within um, a road called Ring Road. So it feels much more kind of intimate. And I appreciated that everything was in such close proximity to one another. So that was something that also really made me become a Waterloo warrior. So. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Maggie. Um, those are some excellent reasons um, that I definitely take um, lots of pride in, especially this uh, student clubs and campus. I definitely really enjoy coming to campus every day for my studies or for my class. Um, now back to um, uh, helping you make your decisions for those of you who are still maybe on the fence about accepting your offer to Waterloo. Uh, we want to help you get the information you need to make that decision. So if you have any questions, please reach out to us. Um, and whether it's to myself, Bailey or Maggie um, or the recruitment coordinators of the programs you apply to um, or to our student ambassadors, uh, let us know your concerns um, and what they are so we can help you make that uh, decision. Um, just as you will be supported when you get to campus, we want to help support you now now as you make those decisions. Um, so in the meantime, we've put together some common concerns we hear from students um, at this time of year, and um, the three of us are going to answer uh, some of them. Uh, so for the first common concern we get is, will I be able to adjust to the workload and meet Waterloo's academic standards? Um, so I'll get started with this answer. Um, so for me, my top a tip to students is um, to have to build and practice your time management abilities um, because um, as long as you're on top of the work um, that's assigned to you, um, things will be um, a lot more manageable and easy, um, even from the most uh, challenging programs to programs that are less um, have less class times. Uh, time management is a bit an ability that is common throughout all. So as long as you have that um, time management, the course load should be um, practical to all the students in your program and in your cohort. So um, that is my biggest tip. But if you are um, if you are struggling in terms of finding it challenging, um, Waterloo is known for our incredible student atmosphere and the encouragement from peers. So um, in engineering, in math and science, um, the ability to collaborate with peers and to ask for help is a huge part of my personal experience as a student. Um, but we also have amazing workshops and um, resources available through our Student Success Office or SSO for short, and they offer tons of workshops um, and helpful seminars to help you improve your academic and lifestyle skills to help you become more successful um, in the um, in school. But in general, um, I really think that as long as you're on top of your game, um, that the academics at Waterloo aren't um, something that's way out of reach. Um, there's something that is tangible as long as you are on top of your schedule. Um, Bailey, I don't know if you have anything um, to add to that. Yeah, Tyler, I totally agree with what you said. I think any time that I have been 
really concerned about something. It's been definitely self-inflicted because I haven't been managing my time. Um, so I think you make great points that it really is um, how you manage your time, uh, whether that's doable. But it, it is certainly doable as long as you keep yourself accountable. Um, in addition to what Tyler has shared, we want to also emphasize that when you come to Waterloo, we want every student to succeed and to continue with their studies. Uh, that's a big reason why at Waterloo we have a retention rate of 94.3%. Uh, that's the percentage of students who continue from year one to year two of their studies. And that is about 10% higher than the public average in Ontario. So that's pretty impressive. Um, another question that kind of goes along with that is, is Waterloo's academic environment too stressful? And I would be lying to you if I said that throughout your undergrad, you would never be stressed. Like stress, I think, is a part of school, at least for me, um, but it's not necessarily too stressful. You might be stressed about an exam, but then you're done the exam and it's done. Um, I find that students at Waterloo are very motivated. They work very hard. They're very dedicated to their academics. But for me, I actually find that that pushes me to stay on top of my work and it actually really motivates me in a positive way. It's not super competitive or scary, but it's like I see my friends are studying. I should be doing that too. So I actually think it's quite positive. In addition to all the supports that Tyler mentioned that really help um, help make sure you can stay on top of that stress and make sure that you're succeeding. Um, there's also lots of ways to unwind and have fun at Waterloo. Like I've mentioned, all those clubs, uh, athletics and recreation opportunities. There's so many ways to also have fun. Um, academics are important here, but it's not um, it's not above your own mental health or having fun. And I think you really feel that as a student, there's a good balance that you can you can achieve. Hopefully that answers the question. Maggie, I'll pass it to you for the next one. Yeah, great answer. Um, and I also just wanted to remind everyone that, um, again, you aren't going through this all by yourself. Um, your classmates and peers are experiencing many of the same challenges that you might be going through as well. Um, there's also, you have upper years that you can talk to for advice. There's residence dons, peer mentors, professor office hours, and academic advisor uh, drop-ins, um, and also the Student Success Office, as Tyler mentioned, and many other programs, services, and offices on campus here to help you succeed. So many different types of resources um, there to help you in your academic environment. And to give you uh, tips and tricks, um, uh, these, people, uh, these resources will uh, help you enhance your skills and abilities uh, during uh, your academic um, journey. Um, it may mean that uh, you might have to be the one to take the initiative to take advantage of these supports, but as I listed, there's just so many of them at Waterloo, so definitely um, take the initiative to do so. I know for myself in first year, um, I definitely took a part in many of those, and it actually helped me a lot um, transitioning from first year into second year, so yeah. Um, so the next common concern is, um, oops, Will I have free time to enjoy myself and have a social life? So I definitely say uh, for sure, you definitely have time um, to enjoy yourself and have a social life at Waterloo. I personally believe, as also Bailey mentioned, a healthy balance uh, in between academics and social life. So for um, myself, I would say try to get involved on and off campus by volunteering at university events, such as open houses, or become an exec uh, as I did for a club or society and there's so many other things to get involved. Um, you can also always explore Uptown Waterloo as well. Uh, you can join an intramural sports team, explore the campus tunnels, we have tons of them, and, or watch a movie with your friends um, after a class. So there's so many opportunities to relax and enjoy yourself once in a while. Um, but with that being said, uh, again, academics are still quite important and the university like university in general isn't just a place where you kind of come to just have fun like um it is a thing it is a place where you're paying for your education so obviously academics does play an important part so my word of advice is to try and find a balance between the two and make sure you take a break from your studies when you need to be um so yeah that is something i would say so i'll pass it off to tyler 
Awesome, great answer, Maggie. Um, I hope we also remember that going to university is more than just studying in academics, as uh, Maggie's question alluded to. Um, so you have to take time for yourself, have us um, have some um, areas where you truly enjoy and have passions for in terms of your social involvements and get involved with one of Canada's uh, largest uh, recreation programs. So um, whether that's through clubs and societies or if to join an athletic um, team or intramural team that you're passionate about, um, there are so many athletic uh, choices to choose from. Um, it really is the best way to refresh, meet people and learn something new. So um, to stay healthy in that um, and to find the balance that Maggie was talking about, um, which is so important to be a university university student. Um, Bailey, one of um, our other common questions I'll shoot to you is, will I be able to find co-op work term jobs? Yeah, I know that's a question that we get all the time um, and with good reason. I can see why it, it's nerve wracking. I know coming into the co-op program, I was worried about how that would go. Um, finding a co-op work term is, I don't want to say easy because it is a competitive process, but it is certainly manageable and there is a lot of support available to help you with that. So like I mentioned, to apply to jobs, Waterloo has something called Waterloo Works where you have a bunch, like just tons of jobs listed for students to apply to. And those are often, um, they'll be like, sorted by program so you can search for if you're in cs you can search for cs jobs or math jobs i search for health jobs um, and it makes it really easy to target the ones that you know you'll have the prerequisites and the knowledge for but also the ones you might be interested in um, and these are all companies hiring co-op students it's important to keep in mind that they know they're hiring students potentially with not much experience so don't be intimidated because of that um, that being said you can also arrange your own job. So um, there's lots of flexibility in how you find that job. Waterloo Works is how I found all of my co-op jobs and it worked great for me. But if you have a connection in the community or there's someone that you really want to work for and you reach out to, um, in general, the co-op program is super flexible in how you fulfill your co-op work terms. There's just like some basic requirements, usually that it's paid and usually that it's a certain amount of hours and a certain amount of weeks. So there's lots of ways to get your co-op job and even into that work term, you can still be searching for a co-op term job. Um, it doesn't have to be right at the beginning, so there is a lot of flexibility. But yeah, I always tell students, don't worry too much. Um, you know, try to get in some extracurriculars to, to boost your resume a little, um, but there's lots of opportunity and lots of ways to get those jobs. Um, so moving on from that, I would also just like to say that Waterloo has the largest co-op program in Canada, and so you will likely find a job. Um, I do recommend leveraging some of those resume and cover letter critiquing se uh, sessions from the Center for Career Action, as well as reaching out to upper students like student ambassadors or your Don um, to get advice for your program. Um, but yeah, there's lots of ways to do that. So uh, Maggie, I'll pass it back to you now. Yeah, a great answer, Bailey. Um, and again, as Bailey kind of mentioned, you know, we don't promise that co-op will be easy, um, just as in general, like getting a job isn't always a guarantee. Um, but out of uh, 96 universities in Canada, uh, Waterloo accounts for almost one third of all cooperative education participants in this country. So that's an amazing thing. And uh, with employment rates typically in the mid to high 90s, um, the work you put into the job search process pays off for students who take it seriously. Um, as well, our team in the Center for Career Action will help you prepare for the job search and help you along the way. So that's definitely another resource to reach out for. Um, so following the next question, um, isn't Waterloo only known for its tech uh, oriented programs? So um, I think Tyler, maybe you'll have some insight into that uh, common concern. Yeah, thanks, Maggie. That is a great question that a lot of people think about. Um, and although uh, Waterloo is one of the top ranking uh, technology universities in Canada, um, we are so much more beyond um, boundaries of technology as well. Uh, for example, we have programs like kinesiology where you get to access the ca cadaver labs straight from first year and have great equipment to test out your VO2 max. Um, um, there's also our unique double degree programs where you get to combine two different majors at Waterloo. And in addition to Waterloo's programs, the university offers many academic
academic and personal supports, um, great facilities and amazing opportunities to get your foot into the work field. So as um, Bailey and Maggie talked about co-op, you can land some really cool co-ops beyond technology companies such as Sick Kids, uh, Sunnybrook, um, Apple, Manulife, Ernst Young Rogers, and the list can go on forever and forever, um, up to 7,000 of those. So um, we have connections all over the world. Um, we have some of the best um, optometry and pharmacy programs in Canada, um, as well as um, our focus on sustainability. Our university aims to be carbon neutral by 2050, as well as zero waste by 2035. So um, we have a huge emphasis on environment and sustainability. Um, our mathematics programs is one of the top in North America. Um, and we are the number one comprehensive research um, university in Canada. So there are tons of uh, reasons um, beyond technology that the Waterloo is known for. Um, for me personally, we are the largest aviation university school in Canada. So um, definitely um, some great stuff beyond technology. So although technology is incredible here at Waterloo, um, you will be coming to a school that is much more than just technology. I think Bailey has some stuff to answer to this question, so I'm going to pass it over to Bailey as well. Sorry, Tyler, I just got a little bit um, cut off here. Can you just repeat the question? I got my thing got muted. Yeah, we're just um, talking about other ways that Waterloo is known for other than technology. Um, so are there any ways um, at Waterloo in your experience that beyond technology that other people can um, know about Waterloo more? Perfect, thank you. Sorry about that. Uh, and I'll keep it brief, but um, even if you're not interested in a tech program, you can still benefit from our rec reputation in technology um, and the connections that you make on campus. Um, remember, even tech companies need experts in communication, business, design, human resources, health, and many other areas. Um, our Faculty of Arts is one of our largest faculties on campus, and there's tons of courses and co-op jobs. So while engineering and tech programs might get a lot of attention, it's an incredible place to study and research in any field. Um, I know I've seen that in, um, in the Faculty of Health as well. Um, Maggie, I'm going to pass it back to you um, if you'd like to touch on the next question. Yeah, so our next uh, common concern is, is the academic environment really competitive? So that is a question that we get uh, quite a lot about Waterloo. So I would say, although students are academically driven and strive for high marks, um, we are not aiming to outdo each other, um, as I've kind of mentioned in, uh, in our friendly atmosphere type of thing. Um, in fact, um, I believe it's quite the opposite. Again, everyone really likes to help each other out. Um, for example, if I can't attend a lecture, I can rely on my friends to take notes for me, and we often work together to tackle any hard assignment questions or study, to uh, study together Sorry, to cover all the grounds needed for an upcoming midterm or final. Uh, the people are super friendly here and kind to one another, so I've never felt like there was really any competition here. And we all want to succeed and do well in the end. So it's kind of related to one of my top reasons. Um, but yeah, I don't think the environment is really competitive. Um, and I'll pass it off to Tyler. Awesome. Uh, thanks, Maggie. Um, I definitely agree. I think um, just because it is competitive to get in, it, um, that competition does fall once you are in the program. Um, so if we can go to the next slide to continue on to our presentation. Um, just wanted to recap our top 10 uh, list um, of why you should come to Waterloo. Um, and now I'm just going to quickly add my final three reasons. Um, I definitely uh, wanted to stay and come to Waterloo because of the innovation and collaboration that is infused in the student atmosphere. You can really feel it no matter what program you're in, the amount of passion that people have for what they study. Um, I love the vast industry connections and opportunities we have at Waterloo, especially in aviation. Um, um, all the airlines and the uh, organizations in aviation that have a connection to Waterloo definitely makes this place stand out and that applies to all programs um, across the board. Um, finally, as Bailey alluded to um, and Maggie alluded to early in the presentation, I absolutely love the city of Waterloo. There's so much to do 
it's a very vibrant city um, and not just a small town or not just a university town. It is its own thriving place. So I definitely think there are uh, there's something for everyone um, on this list. Um, so finally, um, that is our top top reasons. It looks like we only have nine, which is OK, um, but hopefully these um, numbers will um, help you out. Oh, actually, we do have our final one. So a top number one reason is you never know when you might run into a friendly face. So um, definitely is part of the friendly student atmosphere. Um, those are our lovely um, co-hosts from last year, uh, Laura and um, Jay, which is amazing. But I think because of time, we are going to head over to our weekly quiz now. Um, so um, it's an opportunity for you to win a hoodie. So um, I'm going to give our guests a break. Audience, I mean, might have to reflect a bit now. So here's how it works. The next three slides, uh, sorry, the next slide will have three questions for you. So in the Q&A box, please send us the three correct responses to all three questions plus your email address all in one submission. It's really important that you submit all your answers and email together in one submission. So don't hit enter until everything's in there. Um, and if you're one of the first two correct responses we receive, we'll send you your very own Waterloo Warriors hoodie. So remember email and three answers in one response. OK, ready? OK, let's go to our next slide. Perfect. So number one, how many engineering programs are there at Waterloo? Number two, what does SAFA stand for? And number three, what is the recommended date to apply to OSAP? So remember, please include your email in all three responses um, and we will contact you if you're a winner. So we're going to wait for a few um, winners in this chat. The, it is a more challenging uh, quiz question this week. So first one is just how many engineering programs are there? Second one, what does SAFA stand for? And number three, what is the recommended date to apply for OSAP? Just going to wait for our winner here. Looks like I don't see any winners selected just yet. I'm going to go through our answers slowly so um, people will have an opportunity um, to answer that. But the first one, our answer is um, 15. Sorry, and our second one is the school. Um, sorry, the students. Oh, I don't have the answers in front of me right now. OK, those answers are coming in. Perfect. Do we have a winner? OK. Just waiting for that. Amazing. So um, looks like we have ourselves a winner. Our second answer is student awards and financial aid. And finally, the third answer was June 15th. So um, if your name is Kim, um, congratulations on your hoodie um, as well. It looks like we have a second one for Quinn. If you are Quinn, congratulations on your new hoodie. Um, so this was not an easy quiz. So congrats on our winners here. Um, and I will pass it over to Bailey to close off our session today. Awesome. Thank you for running that quiz, Tyler. It's always fun to see. Um, I still wish I could get one of those hoodies, but uh, I guess I could just go to the store. Um, and so with that, folks, um, just because of time and we've had people um, answering your questions throughout the chat, we are going to wrap it up. Um, so I'd like to say thank you for joining us this week again. Um, we hope that we've convinced you why you should accept your offer to Waterloo. But even if the end, in the end, if you decide it's not the best fit for you, um, we want you to still be proud of receiving an offer to Waterloo. And regardless of where you do end up, we thank you for considering us and are confident that you will be successful in your future endeavors. But of course, Course, we hope you'll accept. If you still need more convincing, hear more from our students on why they believe Waterloo is a great choice, and check out the Why You Should Choose Waterloo article on the Missing Manual.
Uh, upcoming events include our last Waterloo Wednesday, which will be happening on June 1st. Um, we still have virtual campus tours running if you cannot make it to campus. Uh, and remember, you can order your brochures, explore campus, and find articles through those links on the screen there. Anyways, that's all from us. So be sure to join us for our final Waterloo Wednesday next next week or two weeks from now, sorry, and learn what happens next and in, uh, into transitioning into university. Uh, see you next week, folks. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for coming.